Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Abhinav Shaktivel, and in this video, we're going to see about how to create custom conditions. So, custom conditions are something that you know. In previous video, we have seen about uh, conditions where I have mentioned that we can create our own conditions. Let's say by default, Selenium comes with a rich set of uh, conditions that you normally uh, can use, which is more than sufficient. But in case if you want to create your own custom conditions for some varied needs, you can also do that. Right. So in this video, I'm going to cover how we can do that. Right. So good. So without wasting much time, let's get into IntelliJ. So if you notice, this is a very simple um, application that I took that is uh, Orange HRM Live. Um, maybe I'll go to the website uh, so that it's much easy. So if we go to this website, Orange HRM Live, um, there is a username, password and all that. So normally we use names and all that to find it. Otherwise, we use Xpark. But let's say in your application, your developers have developed some unique ID. Instead of using ID, uh, they have created something like, uh, you know, placeholder, okay? Uh, or something like data hyphen test ID or test environment ID or something like that, uh, just to make your application easy for automation, right? But those conditions are normally not available. So, so I want to, uh, you know, wait for my uh, thing to have placeholder as username. Let's assume that particular custom ID that the developers have created uh, is placeholder, okay? In, uh, so that we can make our life much easy, okay? So in this case, I want to launch this website and then I want to validate whether my username is having placeholder, whether my uh, password is having some placeholder, okay? some. So if you notice, I want to validate all these things, but you know, in normal case, we have to get the attribute of placeholder and then we have to check whether this is having some value or all that, right? So you can either find the element using this or you can also, uh, you know, uh, in our case, we are going to make sure that it is having some assertion, okay? Uh, we can make some assertion on this uh, element using this placeholder attribute. Anything, whatever you want to do, you can do that, right? So let's go and uh, create our own custom condition, okay? How normally we write our condition? We will use should be, and then we will say condition uh, dot uh, visible, whatever. Here we want to see a new option that is using placeholder, okay? There is no, uh, nothing using placeholder. Maybe there is already something called attribute where you can use your own custom attribute and do it. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is just to showcase how we can create custom conditions. So in, in real world, Serenade guys have already created this. So you don't need that, okay? But this is just a way to show how we can create custom conditions. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is you can create in the same class itself, or you can create a separate class. But in either cases, you have to create a static method because what are the methods that we have seen in condition class? They are all static methods. Okay, at the end they have to return condition. Okay, that's it. So now we can name the same thing. Okay, maybe I'll save it as placeholder name this method as placeholder but what i need to return i need to return new condition that's the main thing okay we need to return a new condition so there are a lot of methods that you can uh, overwrite but for us the important methods here are to check previously it used to be apply but in the latest version it is check okay others are optional but uh, this check method is something that we are really interested in now so now it is asking something here okay some value for now i'll give it as a, B, C, D, one, two, three, okay? Just to satisfy the compiler, okay? We will understand uh, why they are using it. But, but basically this is used for reporting, but we will understand that later, okay? And now uh, there is uh, colon missing, so semicolon missing, I added. So now we have driver object and element, okay? Let's say in your case, you want to do driver dot find element, you can do that, uh, okay? Uh, whatever, so this driver is basically having bunch of things you can use, Okay, browser, uh, get, headless, whatever details you want to get about the driver, you can get from here. But in our case, we want to get the element and then the find the attribute, right? So we want to get the element and get this attribute. Okay? So first, uh, element dot uh, get attribute. And then this here, I will put placeholder because that is the attribute name. Okay, good. Now, I I show this as... Uh, placeholder value, okay? So this is the placeholder value, okay? This is fine. Now I want to uh, check whether this is matching my 
expectation. So placeholder value dot equals ignore case. Okay, how would I do this? I need a, a, the actual string to compare, right? So so I need an actual string. So I can pass string actual placeholder. Sorry, this is the expected one. So this is the so whatever we are getting from the element is actual, right? So this is expected placeholder value. Well, so yeah, so I can just put expected placeholder value here. Okay, good. This will give me a boolean. So now, if you notice, there is check, and then they are doing something like this. But in our case, if you go here, this basically returns check result. So basically, we need to result return a check result object here. Okay. So so what I can do is simply you can do new check result. And then this check result constructor has different things. Okay. So there is a verdict or there is a Boolean. There is verdict object and time. So in our case, uh, we can pass Boolean because we already have the Boolean. So whether it is a pass or fail, we can pass this. Okay. Uh, is placeholder value matches, whatever. You can create a you know variable if you want. Otherwise, you can directly give this. So this is fine. But here you, you have to pass object. Okay, I don't know what to pass. So for now, I'll put um x y set one two three. Okay. And then the complaint, you know, compiler doesn't complain. All good. So let's try to check this is working fine. So I'll try to find the element by username. Uh and then visible. Once this is visible, I want to check. Okay. Or you can even don't have to write it. So should have, right? I want to verify whether placeholder. So normally we'll write a condition, right? Condition, right? But here our, our static method is present in Google test class. So I can put Google test dot placeholder because this is just a static method. Okay. Don't worry about whether it is returning condition or all that. You, you can return string, you can return list, whatever. But it's a static method. How you call a static method? Using class name and the method name. So class name is Google test and the method name is placeholder. And uh, I want to pass the expected placeholder value. The expected placeholder value is this, right? So this is how you call it in the test. It all looks good, right? Let's see what's happening. Let's try to run our test. Let's see, hopefully it should pass. It should assert whether the element is having attribute placeholder with the value of username. So uh, yeah, it passed. Okay, anything that just passed is not really good. So let's see whether it, it throws proper error when we try to fail it because I am expecting now username one two. Let's see whether it is failing. We also want to make sure it, it throws proper error, right? So it waits for five seconds and then it failed. If you notice, the element should have A, B, C, D, one, two, three. Oh, okay. Now we understand why this A, B, C, D, one, two, three is used. It is used for reporting. When there is a failure, it is, it is expecting to pass here the 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 expected placeholder value so i will just pass um, expected placeholder value here and now this x y z one two three let's see where it is oh actual value is the x x y z one two three so i don't want actual value to be this the actual value is actually stored in placeholder value i can basically rename this to uh, actual actual placeholder our actual value for now, okay, whatever, and then I just pass this. Now it looks good. Let's try to run and see the error message this time. So ideally, whatever you are passing here is expected. Whatever you are passing here is actual. So the test should fail, and this time, you notice element should have username one two. Yeah, the attribute should be one two, but here it's not there. And if you notice here, expected is username one two, and the actual is username, so it failed. So this 
they are using this value and this value for you know reporting purpose and right? you can make it more readable instead of just username one two you can also make it like a uh, placeholder uh, uh, value with something like this so it becomes more readable again guys so the whole idea here is you can build your own custom uh, condition uh, by basically returning new conditions uh, it's an it's an anonymous class implementation so we have just one method and then we are trying to uh, implement it again you can also create a new class and then extend the condition and then override the method you can also do that but this is much easier right you 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 create a static method that returns condition and you can do this but this might work in all the cases just in case if you're if the element does not have a placeholder okay then um, while getting the attribute it it might return null uh, i don't know how what how this will behave um, but it might return null okay so in those cases um, you can also check whether if if it is equal to equal to null uh, then you can return uh, you know so that it don't breaks okay uh, the code okay and then in it, if it is null you return this otherwise you return this whatever right right so so yeah this is how you can basically uh, write your code right this just check is just null check but again you can ignore this if you don't need it, okay if you are sure it will be present in all the cases okay yeah, that's how we can create our custom conditions. Uh, Im imagine in a real time in real time framework, you can have a class called framework conditions or my conditions uh, or my application condition, whatever a class, and then have a lot of static methods, all of them returning placeholder uh, conditions. So in that way, you can have multiple conditions can be leveraged in your code. Right? I see you guys in another great video. Until then, tada, bye bye.